Let me show you some beautiful structures. These are radiolarian skeletons. These single-celled microscopic creatures found in oceans all around the world are closely related to amoebas. The radiolarian that once lived inside the shell excreted minerals from its pseudopods which can stick out through the holes and shape the outer skeleton. As a sculptor, I'm astonished that one-celled organisms, little amoeba-like blobs, can sculpt such intricate structures using just blobby appendages. The 19th century naturalist and artist Ernst Haeckel drew these beautiful images based on specimens collected on research voyages around the world. He also drew larger plants and animals, always with an eye for symmetry, structure, and ornament. Haeckel's book, Art Forms in Nature, was hugely popular, in a sense, it was the original coffee table book, and it influenced many designers. As a sculptor, I make designs that are inspired by Hegel's drawings. Is it weird that when I do this, I'm competing with something that has the brain of an amoeba? To a mathematician, it's interesting that among the radiolarian forms can be found structures based on the five platonic solids. The five platonic solids are the most symmetric ways of assembling regular polygons into convex three-dimensional forms. Nowadays, many people know them as the shapes of dice used in the game Dungeons and Dragons. There's a cube, octahedron, tetrahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron. I think Haeckel's favorite radiolarian shape was the icosahedron, because this is the very first image in the first plate of his book. But to a mathematician, the five platonic solids are grouped into three families. Mathematics goes behind the surface to deeper structures. See how the cube and octahedron fit beautifully together? If you look at the light-colored wood here, you see a cube, but if you look at the dark wood, you see an octahedron. They combine so the cube's vertices each lie over the face of the octahedron, and the octahedron's vertices each lie over a face of the cube. And each edge of one crosses an edge of the other at right angles. So we say the cube and octahedron are dual to each other. But you may be surprised to see how this dark-colored dodecahedron and light-colored icosahedron are also duals. Again, there's one vertex of each over each face of the other. Their edges all cross at right angles, and they have the same symmetry. And for the tetrahedron, there also exists a dual. But the surprise here is that the dual is another tetrahedron, facing the other way. The tetrahedron form is self-dual. So there are three families here. And the icosahedron dodecahedron family is the one with both fivefold and threefold rotational axes. It's my favorite, but it's peculiar that there's nothing from the icosahedral family found naturally on a human scale. It only shows up naturally at the microscopic scale. One example is the quasi crystal. It's been known since the 1980s that microscopic icosahedron, dodecahedron, and rhombic tricontahedron shapes can be formed from certain exotic materials in the laboratory and recently some naturally occurring examples have also been found. Much more common are viruses. Why some of my favorite viruses have icosahedral symmetry. Also very common is the C60 form of carbon, sometimes called Buckminster fullerene, in which 60 carbon atoms bond together in a form like a soccer ball. C60 forms naturally in the soot of a candle flame. Unburned carbon atoms from the fuel can reassemble into an icosahedral structure. There are bits of soot all around us, so we're all surrounded by millions of things with icosahedral symmetry, yet too small to see. Because icosahedral symmetry is common in viruses, carbon-60, quasicrystals, radiolaria, and other scientific topics, it's important that scientists have the geometric intuition to understand this form. So I'm very happy to see that nowadays there are icosahedral soccer balls, dice, and even baby toys. It's important for everyone to learn about these shapes early that are actually all around us, just too small to see. But a mystery remains. Why are there no human scale natural structures with icosahedral symmetry, like plant seed pods or something? Can anyone explain that to me? Are humans just the wrong size? Of course, if humans were of a size comparable to the naturally occurring icosahedral objects, our brains would be too small to understand them. So I'm happy to be big, to be able to study and appreciate such microscopic wonders, and to build my own projects with this lovely symmetry.